and the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. We meet in the name of Jesus Christ, who died and was raised to the glory of God, the Father. Grace and mercy be with you. Let us sing our opening hymn. Praise to the holiest in the heights. Today's service will follow a pattern written especially for the Church of England in response to the death of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. I'm Reverend Judith and will be leading the service. Our reader, Dr Paul Giles, will bring the reflection and members of the church community have recorded the Bible readings and prayers. This service is pre-recorded and published online because we remain committed to the safety of everybody as lockdown eases. And so we pray, Almighty God, you judge us with infinite mercy and justice and love everything you have made. In your mercy, turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life 
and the sorrow of parting into the joy of heaven through our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. God has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of his glory in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels to show us that the transcendent power belongs to God and not to us. As we acknowledge our human frailty, we call to mind our sins of word, deed and omission and confess them before God our Father. You raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your Spirit the torn and divided. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God our Father forgive us our sins and bring us to the eternal joy of his kingdom, where dust and ashes have no dominion. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father and Lord of all life, we praise you that we are made in your image and reflect your truth and light. We thank you for the life of His Royal Highness, Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, for the love he received from you and showed among us. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise for all your servants, living and departed, that we shall rise again at the coming of Christ. And we ask that in due time, we may share with your servant Philip that clearer vision promised to us in the same Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Our New Testament reading today is read by Rachel Wilson, our PCC Secretary. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One, and asked that a murderer might be released to you. You killed the author of life. But God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith, in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders, but this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Rachel. And our Gospel reading today is read by Helen Brown, a member of our church family. Alleluia, alleluia. It is the will of him who sent me, says the Lord, that I should lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up on the last day. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. See that it is I myself. Touch 
touch me and see me. For ghost, a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of boiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I have spoken to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witness of these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Helen. May the words of my mouth be acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. Well, here we are already in the second half of April and the blossom tells us that spring has arrived after what has been an especially miserable winter and not just from the weather perspective. Anyway, Easter is still fresh in our memories. Easter Sunday, when we celebrate the finding of the empty tomb, is the pinnacle of the Christian year and after any high point it's very easy to feel a sense of anticlimax. But the period between the original Easter day and Ascension Day, when the resurrected Christ departed from this earth and returned to heaven, an event that we'll commemorate on May the 13th this year, was pivotal in terms of the foundation of the church, post-resurrection appearances by Jesus being extremely important in consolidating the faith of the disciples. Some of you will be aware that scholars think that both of today's readings, the one from Luke and the other one from the book we call the Acts of the Apostles, were almost certainly written by the same author. Something else that the two readings have in common is that they both report that the disciples were witnesses to post-resurrection appearances by Jesus. Now, I've always been rather keen on Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes stories, and a few weeks ago during Lent, I cheekily compared the role of Peter in the Gospel story with that of Holmes' assistant, Dr Watson. Well, there's another point of similarity between Sherlock Holmes' adventures and the Gospel story, and that is resurrection. Most of Sherlock Holmes' exploits were first published as short stories, later collected into anthologies. Towards the end of the second anthology, Conan Doyle got bored with his hero and decided to kill him off in a tale entitled The Final Problem, in which Holmes and his arch enemy, the master criminal Professor Moriarty, locked in lethal combat, plunged to their deaths at the Reichenbach Falls. However, the public outcry at the demise of Holmes was so intense that Conan Doyle had to resurrect him. The first story in the so-called Return of Sherlock Holmes being entitled not The Empty Tomb, but The Empty House. Now there are some very obvious differences between the reappearance of Sherlock Holmes and the resurrection of Christ. And I don't just mean that Holmes was a fictional character while Christ was a historical reality. Whereas Holmes, as we were subsequently told, did not die at the Reichenbach Falls but just went out of circulation for a bit, Christ very definitely did die at Calvary. There were plenty of witnesses to his death and entombment. And unlike Holmes, who apparently used his special expertise in martial arts to overcome Moriarty and save himself, Christ 
did not use his undoubted special powers to avoid death. Now let's get back to today's passage from Luke, in which the risen Christ is recognised immediately by the disciples. Christ takes pains to prove that he is not a ghost. He invites the disciples to touch him and eats fish with them. Jesus reveals the significance of his mortal life in terms of the fulfilment of prophecy, and he explains the requirement that he should suffer and die before rising again. Then Jesus starts to prepare the disciples for what they must do next. Repentance and forgiveness of sins are to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, he tells them. The idea of resurrection, restoration to new life, has a special poignancy for us this year. The last 12 months or so, having been so hard for so many people. As the Archbishop of Canterbury said in his Easter Sunday address, it has been a cruel period of history, taking from us those we loved, ending lives cruelly and tragically. And there are all the other harmful consequences of the pandemic, the damage to livelihoods, education, and human relationships. But the Archbishop has reminded us that the story of Jesus' re resurrection gives hope to Christians. And hope is something that we really need at the moment. One kind of hope is that Britain's vaccination campaign offers a prospect of a kind of resurrection of society a return to something resembling the life we used to have. But regaining liberties in our lifestyle isn't all that's going to be required. What else should we be hoping for? As a parish, we're about to enter into a period of transition towards a future that is as yet unclear. I'm referring to the imminent departure of Daniel and Judith to their new life and ministry in the Diocese of Manchester. We obviously wish Daniel and Judith and the people of Oldham, whom they are joining, all the very best for their new shared life together. But that leaves the church family here at St James with a challenge. What will our new life be as a church community? What will it look like? Well, in the shorter term, there are some practical issues to deal with as we come out of lockdown and resume something like conventional worship. Issues like fixing the building and making it fit for purpose, making sure that we adhere to safe practices when we come together. But resolving these problems is only of value if we have a vision of what our purpose is as a church community. The coming interregnum gives us the opportunity to reflect on that. Although unfortunately, over the last year, some long-standing members of our congregation have drifted away, and obviously it would be good to entice them back, on the other hand, there are people who have had no previous affiliation with our church, who have established links with us, some through the work of the Hope for Sutton charities activities in the church centre, and it would clearly be good to develop these relationships. We've described ourselves as an inclusive church, but if we really want to develop into a community where all are welcome, then we need to be flexible in our thinking. Just in terms of worship style, different members of the congregation have different needs. For some, the administration of the sacrament in formal communion services is paramount. For others, less formal services may be the means to explore and deepen faith. Some of you will remember the interactive cafe church sessions that we used to hold in the church centre. 
And then as we come down out of lockdown, we need to think of the future role of the church centre, which has always been an important element in our interaction with and mission to our local community. It's important that we work together, supporting the wardens and the rest of the PCC, each of us contributing in any way we can to the new church life that we need to build. So thinking about these issues is your homework. I want you to take that away and reflect on it. And with that, I'd like to conclude with a short prayer. O oh God, throughout the ages, you have raised up that great cloud of witnesses from all nations. Grant to us to be strengthened in our generation by their testimony, to be witnesses ourselves of your unfailing love, and to faithfully pass on the gospel of the risen Christ to those around us and to those who come after us. Amen. Thank you, Paul, for your reflections. Now we turn to prayer, led by Jackie Brocklebank, a member of St James' Church family. Let us bring ourselves to God in prayer, with the words of Ron Rollheiser. You, O oh God, are our every breath. You breathe the whole universe into existence every second. Everyone is your beloved. You want our lives to flourish and you desire our happiness. Nothing falls outside your love and care and everything is safe in your gentle, caring hands in this world and the next. Father God, we bring before you the needs of the whole world as we struggle to make sense of our situation in the global pandemic. We pray for families, those we see and those we don't see. Lord, we feel bereft at times. We pray for those for whom family does not provide a safe space and where violence and abuse are increasing. When we feel helpless, O oh Lord, Help us to recognise that you are our father and our mother who knows us as we are and can satisfy our every need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Generous God, we thank you for all the good things you give to us. Help us generously to share what we have and be kind to all those, even those we do not understand. Give wisdom to our leaders in this and every nation. Guide them in the ways of justice and peace, the peace that only knowing you can give. By your Spirit, make us your disciples in our everyday faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Creator God, there is so much we do not understand about our world. But you made the world and saw it was good. Please help us to stop treating your creation as if it were not part of who we are. We are part of the world and the world is part of us. In the midst of climate emergency, help us to change the way we see things. May we see them through your eyes and recognise the sorry state we are in. As we mark International Mother Earth Day on the 22nd of April, let us remember that the earth and its ecosystems provide us with life and sustenance. We derive our survival from the earth, so we desperately need to protect it. We thank you for all the initiatives, large or small, which are helping us address the climate emergency. We give thanks and pray for the Environment Group at St James's. May God continue to bless us as we seek to stop creation groaning in pain at our mistreatment. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Comforter God, we ask for your blessings on all who are suffering in body, mind or spirit, especially those who are known only to us. 
give them your peace and comfort. We remember those who have died, especially those who are known only to us. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name for all that you have given us in and through the life of Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. We give you thanks for his long and full life, for his strength of character and for his devotion and service to family, nation and commonwealth. We praise you for his generosity, the many contributions he made to our national life and the encouragement he gave to so many, especially to the young. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus, you have searched us out and you know us. You call us out of the safety of boats to walk with faith on the water towards you. Even when we stumble and flounder, you reach out to save and steady us. As we go out this week, we carry the living hope with us, and in all we do, may we do in the knowledge of your everlasting love. God of mercy, entrusting into your hands all that you have made and rejoicing in our communion with all your faithful people, we make our prayers through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Thank you, Jackie. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you, and also with you. May all who are called to a place at your table follow in the way that leads to the unending feast of life. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we give you thanks because through him you have given us the hope of a glorious resurrection, so that, although death comes to us all, yet we rejoice in the promise of eternal life. For to your faithful people, life is changed, not taken away. And when our mortal flesh is laid aside, an everlasting dwelling place is made, ready for us in heaven. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to you, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. Who made there by his one oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel 
commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of the precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembering of his death and passion, may be partakers of the most blessed body and blood. Who in the night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave it, gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, in remembrance of the precious death and passion, the mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, we will offer you him this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by his merits and death, and through faith in his blood, we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this, the duty and service that we owe. Do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offences. And fill us all who share in this Holy Communion with your grace and heavenly blessing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And as our Lord has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. And finally, our post-communion prayer. Father in heaven, 
whose church on earth is a sign of your heavenly peace, an image of the new and eternal Jerusalem. Grant to us in the days of our pilgrimage that, fed with the living bread of heaven and united in the body of your Son, we may be the temple of your presence, the place of your glory on earth, and a sign of your peace in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our closing hymn together. Eternal Father, strong to save. And to us all, his servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>